go. There we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Jeremiah's J Man Monero with J Man Speaks. And I'm Jeffrey Scott Stanton with Douglas Elliman Real Estate. Hey, and we got much to say about nothing. Episode eight. Can you can you move me up a little bit? I look like I'm really short. Raise the roof. Well, because you lean back in your chair. You need better posture. I'm not. I'm sitting upright. My back. Are you really? Hurts. That's probably why. That's what it is. Yeah, you I am sitting better. straight up. My, my back is killing me for like a week there now. There we go. Does that, feel, that make you a little taller? Yes, that, that makes me a little better. I wish See, if I look over there, I'm look, it looks like I'm looking at you. I wish there was a ball. I wish I had a curl. But did, oh, I would God. Are starting now? Wait, do you want me to hit you with So we're, we're doing this both on Facebook and Instagram. Oh, stop with that. So we're doing this both on Facebook and Instagram at the same exact time. So if you see me looking down, I'm looking at the Instagram feed. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, let me just give a little bit of feedback. Last week, uh, I did a session on advanced Instagram strategies, and I was like, here's the promise, guys. If you learn something today, it's going to change. And then I get an update yesterday or the day before saying, hey, guess what? You can now schedule Instagram lives. That's right, folks. And I'm not sure if it's a 10K plus feature. They usually roll it. Oh, that's, a, that's your true <laughs> inner color right there. <laughs> For those guys can see this because you're listening, uh, he turned himself all red. But uh, I'm not sure if it's a 10K feature or not. The, the way Instagram works is they roll it out. They see if people use it. And they don't roll it out to everybody. They roll it out to like a small percentage first. And then if people use it, then they'll kind of roll it out to everybody else. So right now, yeah, check your Instagram, go to the live section as if you're going to like, if you're going to post a story, you have live, you have reels, you have story, and then you have posts, you hit live and then it'll, you can schedule up to 90 days in advance, which to me seems a long time, a long time. Facebook is seven days. So I'm going to try to start scheduling it, try to simulcast. Uh, the way we're doing it now, you should be able to see this on Instagram. Post your questions there. I'm not monitoring yeah, so it because my, my I'm monitoring it. Yeah, Jeff Jeffrey is. He's watching it and he can read the questions. And then you're just looking at the output of our feed, which I have on another screen my, right here. You can see my my colors all messed up. My thumb. I can't even see that. Well, you can see it on Instagram, but you can't see it here. Yeah, boy. All right. So what do we uh? as Jeffrey is distracted by his camera settings, which will happen quite often. If the more videos you do, you're like, I, ca I can't take it. I got to fix my, I got to fix my, my camera. Like, feed. Why does this look? Cause I look totally different on there than I do on mine. Oh, so on mine, you look, you look okay, but I mean, you can't fix certain things. It's how you look, bro. <laughs> <laughs> such a jerk. <laughs> All right. So do we have anybody watching this thing? I know there's a bunch, there's a couple of people on, on Instagram. I don't know who's watching this. Oh, on we Facebook. got one, one, one person on the Facebook. That's because they really marketed it heavily. Five minutes ago. <laughs> you know, what? here's the thing. Cause sometimes I, I push it hard and then other times I'm like, mm. you know what? I'm, I'm kind of busy. Let's just see what happens if I don't. And I see what happens. So you're probably watching this on the playback. If you're watching this live, please post any of your questions in the comments. So how about this? If you're watching it live, type live. If you're watching it on the replay, type replay. So therefore we can go back and look and see how many people typed it on each. Oh, we got Billy P from Billings. All of a sudden she's bilingual. She said, hola. Hola, Billy. Buenos dias, buenos dias, buenos dias. Habla Jeremia Maneiro. Aquí en la lucha como siempre. Como está la cosa? Sábado gigante. Y miércoles también. Well, she just called you a slacker too. So what's the um, yep. topic? No text reminder. What's, what's the topic for today, J Man? As we asked, what the topics or jumping off points going to be? And yeah. um, what to do? J Man said this What to do when your client may be committing a felony? Yeah. <laughs> I like that one. It feels wholesome. I feel like a, like a bring, almost like the, the commercial with the, with the, with the gum. Dirty mouth, clean it up. Bring. Oh, um, your, your green screen's got my hair all messed up today, too. My green screen? No, whatever you did. Never mind. You want me to, to fix your fade level? Yeah, because you see what it's doing to my head? Mm. 
There we go. That's as yeah, low as I can go. Okay. <laughs> Movie magic, everybody. So when your clients <clears throat> may be committing a felony, do you know what I meant by that, Jeffrey? No, please explain. Okay. Um, uh, they're doing things that they shouldn't be doing? Yes. Related to real estate, obviously. And, if your clients are okay. selling drugs or doing other felonious activities, that's not what we're talking about here. You should just remove yourself from that listing. Uh, what I'm talking about, I, I have a coaching client that I work with, and they were telling me about a situation where, hey, my seller is listening and recording to all of the conversations that oh, everybody says no. in the home. What should yeah, most, I do? Okay, dun, so let's dun, talk about that for a second. So, yeah. and I'm not giving anyone legal advice. I want Correct. to preface that. Neither am I. Neither am I. So I just want to preface, most states allow you to record video within your own home. However, once you record audio, it has to be a two-party agreement, meaning both parties have to agree that the audio is being recorded in most states. Some states, it's two party, even in a private setting. So it really depends upon your state. I don't know of any state that allows you to record both video and audio of someone without them knowing it. Yeah, so uh, let me expand on that because I've done extensive research about this as well, being that I speak all over and every state's different. Uh, what I will say is consult with your local board attorney as well as your state attorney, but uh, in New York State specifically, and then I'll address some of the others, we are a one-party consent state. If So that means if Jeffrey and I are in a room together, I can record our conversation because I'm a party to that conversation, and I consented because I hit the record button. If I'm mm -hmm. in a two-party consent state, I have to say, Jeffrey, I'm going to record our conversation. Is that okay? He says yes. I say yes. That's two parties. That's audio. Uh, video yes. is different, right? Go ahead. What do you want to say? What do you think about video? No, no. So, so, so again, video in public is always allowed. So if me and J-Man are sitting at a public park, I can take out my cell phone and I can record him because there's no expectation of privacy in public. In a private setting, in your house with your drapes down, your blinds down, there's an expectation of privacy. The question is when you walk into someone else's house, do you have an expectation of privacy? And this is my understanding in New York, and Jamie, you can tell me if I'm, I'm wrong, because I very well may be, is that I can do video if I have normal video surveillance. I can do that. However, once I record audio, it's now because I'm recording video and audio, I do need consent from the other party. Correct. Uh, reasonable expectation of privacy is exactly what the correct terminology that I've heard, and I'm I'm posting in the comments uh, a link to a video from NAR. It's their window to the law, video and audio surveillance issues. So it comes directly from them with what their considerations are um, and recommendations. But the argument is, if you walk into an open house, there isn't a reasonable expectation of privacy. So they could. Uh, same thing with the showing. Uh but if you're going to the bathroom or you're someplace where you expect mm. your changing room like that, that's you're expecting that to be private. And so uh, something would have to be disclosed if there was kind of some kind of video surveillance. So my question would be, well, first of all, I would always tell agents if there is nanny cams in the house, if there's something like that, I would always, I would always suggest, and this is actually for safety reasons, is that you put a little sign in the kitchen table this house is under video surveillance or this house is under video recording, whatever you're going to put. It's smile. You're being recorded. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think doing that will stop some weirdos from walking in. Um, and I think it's good just to be on the safe side and let people know. Um, so my question would be to the seller is why, why are you video recording people? Like what the NLP me is what's important to you about audio and video recording people? It's my house. I mean, that'd be the question I'd have with the seller. It's my house, damn it. Absolutely. But but why? I'm nosy. Like, why do you want to know? I want to see if they sat on my couch. I'm worried about the droplets. Okay. I'm worried, I'm worried about the Rona. So, so, and this being my question, this is a big conversation with the seller. So, Mr. Seller, you understand that people may not feel comfortable with you audio and video recording them. And why would you want to put up any barrier to the sale of your house? 
because I think if you're an agent, and again, I'm not giving you legal advice here, but I believe if you're an agent, you should disclose that to the people coming in. Because now it's automatically, it's a third party. It's not even like me and Jamie are in a conversation. I'm recording it. It's someone's doing the recording that's not even involved in the conversation. Right. And that's where the illegal eavesdropping comes in and the felonious activities. Um, oh. See what I'm saying, Shin? And ignorance is not a defense to this, right? No, it's not. So I didn't know. Well, this is, he knows the seller's recording. Therefore he does know. So you can't say, well, I didn't know that was the law, but let's, what if I didn't know? What if I didn't ask because I don't want to know. And then it is discovered later on. What do you, what, what do you think about that? I'm going to give my opinion again, always preface this. We are not giving you legal advice. Can you put that up on the screen? We are not giving you legal yes, advice. We are I'll not giving it. you legal advice. Yes. So I would, I would think of it like this ethically. Would I want to know if somebody was recording me? I would say yes. Now, is it a whole thing? Can you go about that? You know, most states have confidentiality, meaning you, you have to stay confident if the seller tells you something, but confidentiality is always within the framework. I'm searching for Hold on. What happened there? I don't know what we're doing. Ooh. So confidentiality is always within the framework of the law. So if you know the person is breaking the law, you can't keep it confident. What are you laughing at? I muted it on my end. On, so you didn't hear it, but I was still trying to shut off the music that was, <laughs> that was playing. Um, it's like a whirlwind. Sometimes I'm trying to type this. So, we are so I think, attorney. I think that agent's in a tough position. Because if you know, okay, so, so let's think about this just from the real estate aspect. We have confidentiality, but confidentiality is always within the framework of the law. But latent defects still need to be, dis well, any, anything illegal Correct. and any latent defects, right? So that's where I was going. That's where I was going next. So if you have to disclose anything that would affect the desirability or marketability of the property. Meaning if you knew it was a lake, a leaky roof, a defect in the home, those types of things. So I, I don't know if you'd have to disclose it under the, those terms. And that was a really good question. Thank you. This is a, this, this is a really, this is actually a really good question. I, well, my personal opinion is, and again, just my personal opinion is that you should tell the people walking in. Because if you know that that person's recording, they don't have consent and therefore it's a third party recording, I would say, hey, the pro you know, you're being recorded. Yeah. Uh, in real estate, we have the, there's a law of imputed knowledge. Is that what it, I believe that's what it's called, where if with our fiduciary relationship, if I'm representing a seller, if the seller knows, I know, even if they never told me. Yeah. Right. It's actual knowledge versus constructive knowledge. Actual knowledge means, you know, the information is there. Constructive knowledge is the information was available. You should have known about it, but you didn't. And you are responsible for both. Yeah. I can remember a case where there was a septic tank. This is a true story. I don't know what state it was. It might've been New York, but uh, there was a septic tank. The seller dis um, discovered that it needed to be replaced prior to closing. Didn't tell the listing agent. It was then discovered after closing and everybody got sued. Long story short, the, the listing brokerage, listing agent, the seller ended up paying for the replacement of that septic tank because they said that, hey, if the seller knew, then that's like you knowing because you guys have that kind of fiduciary relationship. It's something they should have known about and you're responsible to disclose things you should have known about based upon your real estate expertise. Mm -hmm. So let's say real life, because there's theory like, oh, in reality, but in theory, if I find out, then let's disclose it in every way that we can, right? You talked about the one way. Let's bring the sign back up. Yep. Smile, you're being recorded. We call that, uh, an attorney would say, you need to have something conspicuously displayed. Displayed. Right? Whether it's 
I might have it on the front door when you come in, you have it on the kitchen table so that a reasonable person walking in knew that they were being recorded. You can't put it the size of a postage stamp, you know, like somewhere hidden in the house. Stuck on the wall. Yeah, like a post-it note, like, shh, you're being recorded, everybody. <laughs> but I, you could also, there's a number of different ways. You said, I think you said private remarks, right? Disclosing it in the private remarks. Mm -hmm. And then for those of you who have some kind of showing service, you get that confirmation of the showing it then says, here's what you got to do. The lockbox is here. The doorman code is here. Whatever it is, how to get into the building. But in there, just, you know, FY for your information, uh, there are recording devices on, on premise and you may be recorded. Just, and you know. again, not giving legal advice. Right. I don't even know if that disclosure works because... You know, everything, the whole world changes when you start doing audio. Correct. You know, that's when yeah, things start changing. Audio Once you different. start, yeah. Video is, again, video, as long as it's not a bathroom or something like that, you know, there's no expectation of privacy. Um, audio is totally, is totally different. So I, I don't, I don't know. It's a good, it's, you know, it's a really good question. There's very few things to get, you know, with me and you together. We don't dun, know, but dun, dun. I think this is, you know, statewide. I think it has to do with your state. Um, and I really think it has to do with best practices. And I think it's having that conversation with the seller more than anything of saying like, like, Hey, what's the deal? Why are you doing this? <laughs> well, uh, post anything out, any questions you have in regard to this in the comments. See, we got five people watching on the Facebook. What's, what's going on in the Instagram since I'm not keeping track of that. We got anything over there. Peace. My people. Two. Two watching, no questions. No questions. Just put it in the comments. Uh, I'm going to try to share this. I have, it's called the, if you go to recordinglaw.com, it has a list of two party consent states. Uh, here's what we have. And then there's some asterisks next to some. It has California, Connecticut, Florida, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Missouri, Montana. Man, almost all the M states. That's funny. Uh, Montana. As Montana says requires notification only Nevada, New Hampshire, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Vermont, Washington, and Illinois. Wow. Yeah. And there's I mean, a lot of those States too. There's weird things when it comes to it. Cause like you're, you're generally in most States allowed to what's called, allowed to record what's called natural sound. Meaning that I have my microphone open in public. You can see it and I can record the ambient sound around me. If I happen to pick up your conversation, that's different because I'm recording natural sound. So there's a lot of laws when it comes to this. I don't, I, listen, I don't think it's a smart idea. You know, I don't think it's a smart idea for the seller to do it. And my conversation should be more with the seller of why are we doing this? You know, to, to me, that's, that's the most important part. I'm gonna see if this works. I'm trying to share. A share. So again, while, while Tim is trying to share a share, if you have any questions, type them into the uh, chats and we'll. Uh... That's kind of cool. That is kind of cool. Here we have on our trusty monitor. Wait, which direction? Over here. Yep. Looks like there's all the light blue states are one party consent. So, Jim, I got a question this. I remember back in the day we used to tell agents, you know, if you really want to know what you sound like on a listing presentation, you know, stick a stick one of those little micro cassette recorders, digital cords, stick in your pocket and then listen to it afterwards. I guess that would be the same exact thing too. You know, are you recording the person unless you're in a one party consent state? Yeah. You know, actually, that's a really smart idea. Just in general, if you ever want to know what you actually sound like and what you're really saying on a listening presentation, role play one out with somebody you know i'm not gonna say do this consumer because we don't know if you actually can record that consumer right but role play role play it out with someone to record it and then go back and listen and you'll hear the stuff that you maybe maybe there's a lot of ums uh mm, mm, in there i know jay man when i first took um Toastmaster? iti oh, I years and years and years and years and years ago with, with jim Paglisi up in your neck of woods up in the rock yeah um you know, we had to do our presentations and then the instructors all comment. So ITI is Instructor Training Institute, New York State Association of Realtors still gives the course, but I took the original course probably 
God, it's got to be a, probably almost 20 years ago at this they point. They probably had overhead projectors, right? The, like the, We did. Or did you have a slide that went, you had to like, with a little remote? No, I actually used the, yeah, um, the clear ones. What were those? What yeah, those the called? Over, the overhead, the overhead projector. You, you put yeah. it on there, you had a marker with like a clear. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's what we used. Did you show, so, a, uh, did you show we, a film strip? Like where you, you had somebody every like beep, they would turn the. I remember those. No, I'm not that old. So during the instructor oh, training institute, we had to do presentations and um, three of the instructors, you have a bunch of instructors. So three of the instructors wrote the words, two of the instructors wrote the word simple and circled it. One of those, the third one wrote, what's simple to the instructor is not simple to the student. You said simple 12 times. So simple used to be my crutch word. And until I went back and watched that recording of me, which was on, you know, the old VHS, it might've been beta. No, I'm just kidding. The old cassette tapes. I didn't know that I was actually saying that. So I think, you know, for your listing presentations, your buyer consultations, I think it's a great idea. Role play it, record yourself and then play it back and see, see if what you're attempting to say is actually what you're saying. Cause it may not be. Uh, Beverly. I'm not sure why Rhode Island is white. Maybe they ran out of marker when, <laughs> cause it says Illinois is, I think it's like a light gray, but some of those States where there's an asterisk, it says there's other provisions that apply, but I posted the link in the, it's in the comments if you're watching this, but if you're listening to this, go to recordinglaw.com. It has it. It's really a, a good website. I'd rather be the source of sources. And you can go on there. It even has Canada recording, UK, all over the place. What you can do, one party, two party consent states. So we have a bunch of people on um, the Facebook, the book face. The book face. And I'm curious, where's everybody from? I guess Beverly's Rhode Island. Rhode Island in the house. Put it in the comments. Where's everybody from? Just curious. Yes. <laughs> I thought you were going to go into a song you shouldn't have gone into. <laughs> No. Uh, so it says Rhode Island whistleblower laws. Rhode Island is an employment at will state. Nope. Child support laws. Nope. Lemon law. Nope. Car seat laws. Nope. All right. Well, I don't know about Rhode Island. Oh, we'll skip that part. Works in Rhode Island. <coughs> Billings. Lives very cool. Long Island. Whoa. Strong Island Billings. in the house. Very uh, cool, very cool, Lord very cool. works at your company. Does she? She's in uh, Rock Lauren, what office Rockville you're in? Center. Rockville Center. It's one of our new offices. Very cool. Very cool, welcome. very cool. And so, Jamie, what else we can talk about? I don't know. I came up with the jump off. Now you come up with the, with the you know, fast break. Ha! Get it? Jump off. Fast break. That was good. I thought it was clever. Okay. No. So let's How about um, preparing, preparing for the holiday season and uh, ramping oh, yeah. up your business for 2022. I think that, that, that would be good. Cause we're almost getting to that time of year when agents go like this. Just walk away for the walk away. Yep. Walk away for the holiday season. <clears throat> well, first of all, my big suggestion is your business plan, your business plan for next year should be done now. Like this is when you should be doing your business plan. Don't wait till January. Your business plan should be done now. We always shoot to finish our business plan by the end of October. We're actually doing a, uh, my company, we're doing a business plan road show that we're going to Texas, uh, Colorado, California, and Florida. And we're doing, you know, one day in each area, two days in each get, area. Why is that weird? You get an invite. What? What do you, you mean? Invite me and go, oh, <laughs> he's here. You, you want to show up? You can show up. Whatever. That was not an invite. <laughs> but we're doing it because like now is the push. The, the push between the fourth quarter push that you're at. A lot of people relax and, well, it's the holiday seasons. But this is what sets you up for success in January, February, March. Way too many agents wait till January 15th or first or second, third week in January. It's too late to and play then catch up. Oh, oh, uh, I, I've been slacking for the past three months. 
So I think now's the time to business plan. I think business, I think your business plan really can be a one sheet business plan. Or you can do a full blown, you know, we have a boot camp program that we offer that the business plan is like six pages. And they take that six page business plan because these are all mostly new agents. They fill out their business plan, their marketing plan, their financial plan, their budget. And then we take it down to a one page executive summary. So you have the whole thing written, but you know, this is your one page to follow up. And I think the other thing people should be prepared for, especially that you get into holiday parties, you get into board parties, if they're still doing those things is don't hang out with your normal click. You know, you go to these mixers, you go to those things, you're hanging out with the two people from your office. Those two people from your office are never giving you business. They're not, they're in your office. You know, pick someone that you can go up and meet. You know, if you're at a, a triple play, you're at the NAR convention, you know, make it a goal. I want to NAR. meet someone from New York City. I want to meet somebody from Rochester. I want to meet somebody from Miami. And make that your goal of who do you want to meet and how you're going to meet them. Here's what I discovered, uh, especially with like so many, we just came back from a conference, right? And it's like, mm -hmm. I, I am not as, contrary to what people might think, I am an extrovert. However, I'm not comfortable in an environment where I don't know anybody, but mm -hmm. I put myself in uncomfortable situations. I'll put myself, I'll go someplace and be like, I don't got shit to do. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go someplace where there's people mm -hmm. and then just be like, uh, Hey, what are you doing here? I don't know. <laughs> I'm from New York. I'm here at a networking event <laughs> in Atlanta. In Atlanta. You know? Atlanta. That was me and Jay, man. <laughs> so it's like, put yourself in that position where you're like, so uncomfortable, but that's where you would meet, meet new people. And like, look at, we, Absolutely. we met people that are, that have flipping opportunities. We met investors, people, you know, yep. all, there's, but here's one thing I can guarantee you that, like you said, sitting with those same two people that you know from the conference, cause I get it right. We, we, we go and we want to feel comfortable because we're scared that nobody's going to accept us. And so we're like, okay, Jeff, please stick with me and let's hang out in this corner. And Let's not talk to anybody, man. I'm scared. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, uh, it, it, have a plan. Have a And strategy. I think when you, especially when you get to the holiday, like even if it's a holiday party, that's say like your spouse's company holiday party. Like, who do you want to meet? Like have a goal of who you want to meet, how many people you want to talk to for some of these networking things. They'll, they'll publish like a list of people who are attending. And I always, if I can get that list beforehand, I'll always look back. Oh, I want to meet that person. I want to meet that person. I want to meet that person. So I'll walk in. If I see Jamie, oh, Jamie, do you know Steve? Oh, I know Steve. Okay, great. Could you introduce me to him? So that you have that ability to do Wait. if you can find out who's gone beforehand. I got to get, I got to hit you with this one here again. It was a good idea. Partner up and have a strategy. This, this, I don't think I've talked about yeah. this before, but it's so good when you have somebody else. And if you, like uh, Jeffrey said, if you, if you know the list ahead of time, then it's like, okay, here are some key people that I want to meet. There's nothing wrong with doing some research, right? You look on LinkedIn, you look at what they're doing. Maybe they just published an article. Maybe they were on this TV show. Maybe they just sold something in that building that you were amazed that they sold something in. Whatever it mm -hmm. is, you're like, oh, Jeffrey. Oh, dude, man, I, I just, I heard about you guys have the, 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 the guy from the million. And Jeffrey, you're like, oh, yes. Everybody's favorite topic is themselves. So the more interested oh, you can, right? The more interested you can be in what they're doing. But then the other part of it is, and Jeffrey and I talked about this when we were at this networking event, is not mm -hmm. to get trapped. Yeah. Right. I was like, Jeff, if uh, if you see me go like this, mm -hmm. that means Bell save me. Yeah, save yep. me. I'm trapped here against the wall. I'm in a corner. It's like I can't give an uppercut, and, and then you know, side side and, step. And that's what's. Yeah. That's what's good about yeah. When I said before, don't just hang out with your friends. I meant don't hang out with your friends at the corner. But if you can go there with someone and have that plan and say, listen, I'll work my way around this side of the room. You work your way around this side of the room. There might be someone. Oh, you know what? Let me introduce you to J Man. Like, and I'll call you over. Mm -hmm. You'll see someone. Oh, let me introduce you to Jeff. Like, that's a great way to do it because then I can actually meet twice the amount of people. If Jamin goes, oh, this person and Jeff, they can do business together. Let me choose you to Jeff. Let me choose you to whoever. I think that's a great way of doing it. And uh, I never sit down, even if there's the availability to sit down. Some people think, I mean, part of that is my ADHD, but I, I also don't want to be stuck, mm -hmm. right? Because once you sit down, then 
it it it, it it's yeah. kind of obligates you to stay sitting or you have to interrupt him like oh please excuse me i have to go talk to these other people i'd rather stay standing you know stay engaged in that conversation and then be like oh i'll be right back and really it's like this conversation is not going anywhere <laughs> so let's let's move on but in a polite in a polite way where i'm mm -hmm. not going um i'm out of here i got more important people to talk to but don't get trapped no because that, that'll happen to everybody have some sort of sign, but like, hmm, the, hmm. and if I introduce, <laughs> if, if you're with somebody and they introduce you to somebody, make sure you put your hand out and say your name. Cause the likelihood is that they don't remember that person's name. If there isn't a name tag. Yep. Right. And it's like, Oh, this is my buddy, Jeffrey. And then Jeffrey will go, Hey, how are you? And your name is, and I can go, Oh, yep. it's Joe. Okay. In my yep. head. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that out loud. Um, but it's, you know, I love when people say, oh, what's your first name? Again, I go, you remember my last name? Yeah. No. <laughs> like, come on, man. I'll do, I'll do the same thing. Like, if I don't know the person's name and I met, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't recall your name. It feels awkward for that second or two. But then afterwards, look, it's like, you know, I meet yep. so many people. I just, it, let's admit you a bunch of times. I generally not remember your first what's, name. What's, it's better than calling them the wrong name multiple times, right? Like I introduced <laughs> somebody to a guy named Maurice and he's like, oh, why didn't you come to my my town ever? He's like, well, I haven't met a Marcus in that town yet before. And he's like, well, you still haven't met a Marcus because my name is Maurice. <laughs> it's like, just be sure, be sure about it. You know, it's funny because I said that when we were at uh, Rhea. I wanted to be sitting down one of the tables and I had said to someone, I said, yeah, my thing is if I'm ever at any place with my girlfriend, I introduce my girlfriend and I don't say your name, my girlfriend will ask, I'm sorry, what is your name? And if she does that, that means I don't remember your name. That means I really don't remember your name. And I felt too embarrassed to say it. So, you know, it's like, hey, hey, what is your name? Hi, I'm Dana. What's your name? Oh, I'm Jamin. Oh, I'm Jamin. Thank you. <laughs> well, and, and sometimes it's, it's polite and it kind of pulls the awkwardness away from them. Cause I don't want to assume mm. that everybody's going to remember my name all the time. How, you know, how cocky it's just like, Oh, Hey, how are you? Jeremiah's remember J man. And then they're like, mm. Oh good. I don't have to pretend oh, yeah, like fine. I remember your name. And it just makes everything more comfortable because we're all human. Yeah. If you, someone goes into, if someone ever goes to from, introduce me if you're from the city, you say human, human, human. If someone ever goes to introduce me and they don't say, Oh, this is Jeff. I'll go over. Hey, my name's Jeff. And just put out my hand. I'll always say my name first. Just, no, I don't want the people to feel awkward. My name is, my name is. Slim Shady. Um, Copyright. As we, well, we only stop there. You can't go more than, what is it, three seconds? No, I, so I, I found that if you sing it, it's okay. Uh, I yes. played nine seconds but, of the A-Team theme, and they got me for that. It used to be 15 <laughs> seconds was the rule, but now it's like, pff, I think you get away with five. Like, I went like this. All my life. That's it. That's all I can do. Yep. Yep. Otherwise, that's a copyright violation and they strike it out. So I, I think, again, we're talking about heading up, to, heading up to the holidays. I think you have, to tell, you have to take time off for yourself. I think you also have to have that plan that what am I going to do next year? You know, because honestly, don't wait till July. Uh, to July, that's even worse. Don't wait till wait June. Wait till July. You might as well get Don't wait tent, till June. put it in Central Park, okay? Because that's where you're living. Don't wait till January or February to, to start your business planning. Um, it, it has to be done now. Your business plan has to be ready to roll into effect on the first. Um, and it sets yourself up for success, you know, because your actions between October, November, December are going to be your closings in January, February, March. And, you know, oh, I take the whole month of December off. Well, I hope you got a lot of stuff in that pipeline. Well, here's, I love when I'm talking to people in my market and they're like, you know, I've just been so busy. I'm just gonna, I need some time off, you know, Thanksgiving, December. It's, I'm going to take some time for me. Okay. And in my head, I'm going all gas, no break. I'm not taking a break. Mm -hmm. People take the whole like couple weeks off for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is one day. Okay. And then and the maybe next day do some Black Friday shopping or something like that. That's cool too. But while you're out there relaxing, watching football, I'm going to go get expired listings or I'm going to go do stuff 
you know, where there's going to be a lot less competition because you're all taking a break. There are people spending buckets full of money to acquire your clients right now. Honey? <laughs> yes, honey? For those of you who can't see that, he just squirted the bear, you know, the little honey bear? He just yeah. downed a shot of honey. But well, there my, are people my, that are- My throat is bothering me. So it's mine. There are people <clears throat> that are spending buckets of money right now to go after your clients. They are. They're spending, you're, you're taking the two weeks off and a week off here and a week off there. And all of a sudden you're off a month in the fourth quarter. People are spending, you have huge companies spending lots and lots of money to acquire your clients that have already done business with you and your friends and your family. If you, if you put, listen, if you take that big long break, there's someone like J-Man who's a hungry person is going to sit there and they and that's it. I'm coming to that's eat your it. lunch. I'm coming for it. <laughs> Go ahead and take a break. I'm coming for your lunch. Yeah. So I say, you know, take the time off, but make sure that you, you, you're still putting in the work because what you do now sets you off for success in January and February. Maybe should that be our next week's broadcast? Like, yeah, let's do that. Business planning. Yeah, I like that one. Business planning the right way. And I'll bust out the whiteboard. I'll be like, wee, 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 wee. camera two. Wee, 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 wee. Okay. Anything you want to say I in closing, just... sir? Hold on. There's. I like oh, that God, one. I, I feel like that one. You know what's funny? There's absolutely no... Look at. There's nothing you, I want to say in you closing. You secretly love you. it. You love it, but you're you're just, you're trying to. You just gotta just let go, baby. You know what I'm saying? Just just have fun. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, Jeremiah, indubitably, this is not uh, the profession. Indubitably. Podcast. I've never used the word indubitably uh, besides right look now. Like you would use it indubitably. <laughs> no, I would need like those, I would need those little monocle glasses, yeah. you know, little, the little circles. Mm -hmm. Indubitably. Indubitably. <laughs> I think indubitably we have come to the end of this. Yes. J-Man and Jeffrey. Much the J&J Show, nothing. everybody. Look, at, thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate you. We have much to say about nothing. A lot to say about something. Jeff is at a loss for words, so we'll hit him with his favorite. <laughs> Boom. And on that note, that is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero, and I am Jeffrey Scott Stanton, and we will see you on the next one. <laughs>